you talk about the, using them simultaneously. And, and, but what you want to do is, is get that Incas hook in there in the right position underneath without beginning to lift your Incas. Now you're all set. Now, now you bring in the strut guide and then simultaneously you lift up and push down. The other thing that's interesting is that when I first saw Mendel Robinson do this procedure, and I, and I saw him many times, he operated with one hand, uh, did not lift up the Incas, and did not get sensory neural loss. So uh, although we feel this is the most gentle way to protect the, the inner ear, uh, we can tell you that, I can tell you from personal observation that Mendy Robinson used one hand. Now this technique may seem uh, difficult at first, and I highly recommend practicing this in the bone lab. You can use uh, soft tissue that's pressed from, from a cadaver and get a, an old prosthesis and practice this technique a number of times. Uh, in the literature recently, we're constantly reviewing articles, Bill, about non-crimping crimping pistons, and this is a non-crimping technique. It's an extremely stable technique. So I think some practice in the bone lab would be very well rewarded in trials in putting, using this technique, putting the van graft in properly and putting the bucket handle prosthesis on without great difficulty. I, I think I had a very strong comment there, Lenny. You know, we've had a lot of fellows uh, all trained in this technique. They all use this technique. And we've all felt through the years that the easiest part of our technique is putting on the prosthesis. And the hardest part of the wire is putting, on the, in the, is putting the wire on. It just doesn't make sense to us to, to make this part of the procedure so hard when it really should be so easy. And you know, there are, goodness knows how many kinds of different wire to use. I mean, if, if, if the wire technique is so good, why are there 25 different wires out there? Whereas if you're gonna use a piston, there's one basic piston. It might look a little bit different. It might be made out of a different material but there's one piston that fits onto the lenticular process and we very much, very much encourage you to use it or learn to use it. Once we've placed the prosthesis, Bill, uh, the wire keeper can be gently uh, pulled over the incus. Uh, if it's uh, easily done, that's fine. If not, it doesn't have to be done. Uh, one of the prior papers from the practice uh, demonstrated that the audiometric results are the same whether the wire is up or down. We'll take a, a number three instrument, a foot plate chisel, and then gently palpate uh, the incus and see that the prosthesis is bilateral, so we know that it is self-centered over the vestibule and fitting very well. By the way, this is a titanium prosthesis, so it's MR it will be MRI compatible for future MRI scanners. Plus, it doesn't have the reflecting sheen that we have with the stainless steel prosthesis from the past. And we did. Uh uh, 50 consecutive cases in second ears using the titanium. We got the same results as with the stainless steel. So you get the same results in a non-magnetic substance that doesn't reflect light. We, we would encourage you, if you're using the Robinson piston, to use the one that's now made of, out of titanium. Once we've checked the prosthesis, we now replace the tympanometal flap we carefully check for any remnants of curettage that are left. You can use a curette to gently bring back the tympanometal flap. If there is a tear in the tympanometal flap or even the tympanic membrane, w the vein graft that was taken initially from the forearm, we can use that to repair uh, a small tear in the flap or the tympanic membrane. Um, we will then place gel foam after audiometric testing is confirmed that the patient does indeed hear much better.